Hey, good evening, everyone. This is Sports Tonight News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be a Red Sox versus the Yankees, the hated damn Yankees wild card. I'm a series, but of course, it's a wild card game preview for this video as the MLB does the one game playoff now. Excuse me, for each wild card team, which is an interesting circuit for sure that some fans have got used to and others like, but still have taken some getting used to being more younger but traditional as fans. But when it comes to a series like this and the Red Sox and Yankees, one of the biggest rival actually, no, not one, the biggest rivalry in the history of baseball, to be frank. That is when it's a great game, and it's going to bring a lot of energy. It's box office. Yes, <clears throat> obviously some people I saw rounding down, not Red Sox fans, not us obviously, but some people that are overall bigger fans wanted to see the Mariners get in for the first time in a while. Um, but obviously at Major League Baseball didn't want to see that because the most box office thing is what do we exactly have. The Red Sox against the New York Yankees. So that's what we're going to get. We're going to get two power pitchers, two guys that got great breaking pitches, great off-speed pitches, combined with their fastball in Nathan Evaldi and Garrett Cole. Cole was 16-8 and with a 3-2-3 and 2-43 strikeout. Evaldi was 11-9 and with a 3-7-5 and a 195 <coughs> Ks. When I made the video earlier on the Red Sox, thank you so much for your comment. Somebody commented that Sale demanded the ball, and I love that mentality. That's a mentality you expect for Sale to have because he is that beast. He is a goat. He is a great pitcher. But this year, I think Evaldi did own, earn this, and he earned this first start because he's been there and done that, been the most consistent pitcher since day one of the season where a guy like, for example, Nick Pavetta started the season very good and then really teetered off and then was able to close out the final game and have some success. Um, but really was not the same pitcher as he was in the first half. Martin Perez has had spurts of success during the season, but never really was anything overly sexy or special, obviously. And then Tanner Hoke looks like he's going to be successful in the future, but they've only given him so much of a leash to this point. So you got the guy that's been there, been the stopgap, stopped the losing streak recently as well against the O's, and also has stopped other losing streaks as well as skids during the course of the season. So I think this was the right decision to go with Voldy, who was going to go against Garrett Cole. <clears throat> Let's get into the lineups that these two pitchers are going to be facing. Let's start first with the damn Yankees lineup. Uh, that is going to be Anthony Rizzo leading off. He is not the same Anthony Rizzo as he used to be. Uh, he's only hit 248 this year, but still had 61 RBIs and 22 bombs. So you definitely can't leave a fastball. Of course, Evaldi being a guy that likes to have confidence with his fastball, as he should, definitely still can't leave one over against him. Aaron Judge, a guy that's in the MVP race, as much as I hate to say it, 39 homers, 98 RBIs, 287 playing right field, standing at the D8, 35 homers, 97 RBIs. For him this year, Gallo batting fourth at left field. Glaber Torres playing some second base for them, batting fifth. Gardner in center field tonight, batting sixth. Gio Yoshella seventh at third. Um, Kyle Hisakiyosha, Higiyashioka, excuse me, batting eighth, playing catcher, who has a little bit of pop, but other than that, isn't as known on the hitting side. Had 10 home runs and a limited amount of at-bats, but only hit to a 181 average. And then the, the um, slick fielding shortstop, Andrew Velasquez, is going to be a shortstop, which does make sense for the Yankees because Glaber when they put him over there, is a fielding error waiting to happen. So it makes sense for them to go more with the defensive-minded lineup, particularly for a one-game playoff, let alone a whole playoff series. Now, when it comes to the Red Sox, the Red Sox are going to be leading off Kyle Schwarber, who, of course, had a great season with 32 bombs and 71 RBIs. Second will be Kike Hernandez playing center tonight, who had 20 and 60. Rafael Devers, who's an MVP candidate, at least should be himself at 113 RBIs and 38 home runs. He's one of the biggest reasons the Red Sox were able to prevail and come through it, other than the manager, Alex Cora, who's got some flag from some, but I believe actually has helped this team to persevere this year and get through falling off and not having the same success they had in the first half, of being able to persevere and still be able to make a wild card when they were not even projected to make the postseason at season's beginning. <clears throat> Batting fourth, you have Bogarts, who had a down... Um, year to his liking, probably, but if that's a down year to your liking, um, then that's still a pretty damn good year, getting 79 RBI uh, to 23 home runs. 
And then you have Alex Verdugo, who's fit in nicely like a glove since coming over. Obviously, he ain't Mookie Betts, but he's a very nice mix-in player. And that's what he's turned out to be. Hunter Renfro, the career year boy, 31 RBI, or 31 homers, excuse me, 96 RBI. Um, he's been great. Bobby Dahlbeck's been very good. Uh, Christian Arroyo's going to get the start at second base. Uh, he's batting ninth tonight. Renfro's batting sixth. Plawecki seventh since he's been catching um, Nathan Avaldi, and also has hit very well. He's had a breakout season at the plate um, in limited appearances this year and is a great fielder, just like Higiyashiosa. It's just Pulecki has more control with that bat, that's for damn sure. And then, again, Dahlbeck is eighth. So that's the lineups tonight. I believe the Red Sox do have a great chance to win this game. The issue, the, not the issue, the big thing here, I should say, is they just need their offense to be consistent. Obviously, coming down the stretch run of the season, the offense was sputtering and they were finding ways to win games more so than actually playing like you expect the Red Sox to play when they're clicking on all cylinders. Obviously, they're not going to have J.D. for this game, who's a big part of that lineup too and had a good season, but you're going to have to figure it out. You still got Bobby D. in there. You obviously still got Devers. You got Bogey. You got Renfrew. You got guys that had career years. You got Schwarber in there. So you still got a very good lineup. You got to figure out a way to put good at-bats together against Garrett Cole, get to the Yankees bullpen, which is obviously a good bullpen, and be able to have a good outing um, against them at the plate. And then in the flip side, you're going to need Nathan Avaldi to have a very good outing at the mound and be able to be that guy that's picked the team up on his back multiple times this season and stepped up in Chris Sale's absence. You're going to need him to be that because the Red Sox, obviously, unlike the Yankees, do not have a very good bullpen. They got Garrett Whitlock and a couple other cats down there, Brazier and limited appearances, that have been effective. <clears throat> but minus those few guys, Adovino's been inconsistent this year. Um, so you got guys that are veterans, but they had the veterans haven't been that consistent. So you're going to need those guys to step up if you have to go to the bullpen. Preferably, you're going to want Evaldi to be able to pitch one of those crisp games. He goes a nice, clean six innings, six and two thirds, even seven. And then you're pitching with the guys that help you sit pretty in that bullpen rather than guys like X said in the last week of the season. You're going to be kind of sitting on the edge of your seat with every pitch. That's not what you want to have to do. So the offense has to obviously get churning and be the Red Sox offense we know it can be. Nathan Avaldi has to do his thing like he's done all season. And somebody in this bullpen, no matter what, unless if Nathan Avaldi pitches nine innings, is going to have to step up and have a good game and be able to close it out and finish this game and come up big for Boston in order for them to be able to beat the Yankees. Those are the three things they are going to need. I hope you all enjoyed this preview video to the Red Sox versus Yankees wildcard game, the one game playoff with the best rivalry in the history of baseball going at it tonight. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content down below or on the widget up above. Have a great day and pleasant day, and enjoy the playoffs, everybody. Hats off to the Red Sox for getting to this point. Let's keep it going. Peace out, everybody.